Hey guys and welcome back to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and this is episode 2 of Let's Play Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. In the previous episode, we got blown up outside the cafe, met uh, Nico, and it's all the start of the investigation. If you did miss yesterday's episode, go back and watch it. It's very vitally important. And before I just delve into this episode, I'd like to say a massive, like seriously massive thank you to you guys for tuning in yesterday. I mean... It's now uh, nearly 9 o'clock of the day of release of the video. The video is out at 4, and I've had over 100 people view it already, and that is just mental for me. So thank you, thank you so much for that, and all the likes and comments. Really appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, keep, keep them coming. Smash that like and all that good stuff. Right, let us go down here and talk to this man digging a hole. And let's see what he can help with. Okay, so we need... I mean... I'll level with you. I pretty much know the start of this game fairly well. Um, so I'm going to not rush through it. I'm still going to kind of... Don't touch that phone! Don't touch that phone! Sorry. Still going <laughs> to do things like that because I knew he was going to do it. Um, but about halfway through, I'm going to get a bit stuck. Hey! Stop that! Get away from there! What do you think you're doing? I was admiring your toolbox. Are we? Had a good look, have you? I'm warning you, if you touch it, I'll crack your nut. <laughs> okay, I get your point. All right, let's talk to him now. Hey, you. I it's thought you'd nice. been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics packed quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Well, let's ask him about Mr. Clown Man. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Ho! Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. <laughs> Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already. I didn't see a thing. He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. He'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. I'm not a fan of clowns, to be honest. Listen. I have to find that clown. He's a killer. Say, who are you anyhow? A cop? No, of course not. I mean, do I look like a cop? No, but you act like one, sticking your nose in where it's not wanted. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. I wondered what that bang was. Any bodies? <laughs> yeah. An old man was killed. Merde. I didn't think it was that serious. What about the waitress? Oh, she's fine. Thank the saints. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Care beat. I could have knocked his block off. <laughs> I could have knocked his block off. Let's ask about this, uh... Let's pretend I'm a cop. Take a look at this. You told me you weren't a cop! Don't shout about it. I'm working undercover. Who are you looking for? That's confidential. <laughs> Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at these damn bleeding out liberals. Cha! Save the dolphins. Catch them and eat them, I say. All that fuss <laughs> over a bunch of fish. Nah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. 
like champagne bottle corks, no? <laughs> ah, what this? Saleh Din running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend. Bucephalus reborn, mon ami. Like a streak of lightning she is. Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. What about your toolbox? Stuff it. Help yourself. And he's off to put some money on the races. Why don't I steal all this stuff then? Oh, music. I found a T-shaped tool in the box. I didn't know what it was, but it looked useful. Anything the tool else? The box didn't contain anything else I needed. Okay. Can we call Nico from this phone? Nico Galad. Bonjour, Kula. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? Well, I haven't had a lot of luck. You found nothing? Uh, no. <laughs> Look, I'm very busy right now. Call me if you have any news, okay? Oh, yeah, I guess. Adieu, monsieur. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> he, just, he just wanted a chat. Uh, right, so let's have a look at the. How do we look at something? We right it was a it? metal rod yeah. with a handle at one end and a short cross piece at the other. Okay, I know what to do with this thing. It's all coming back to me. If I double click, does it go faster? No, he doesn't. Because with that thing, I have to go over here. Double click down there? No. He's just walking, taking his time. It's alright. He's a bit fragile after the bomb. I don't blame him. Oh, the art style, man. The art style. Wonderful. I was lucky enough to get one of the Art of Broken Sword books. So let me know if you've got one of those books. It's amazing. Love it. Right, let's have a look. See if there's anything around here that we need. Broken bottles. There was nothing of interest. I tried to lift the cover with my fingers, but couldn't gain any leverage. You know what that means? we got to go down into the sewers, because why not? We're an American tourist on holiday. And what's not to love about the Parisian sewers? Get in. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. Funnily enough, this is the second game in a row that I'm heading down into the sewers in Paris. I've just finished my uh, Let's Play of Yesterday Origins, where, yeah, I had to go down in the, in the, uh, in the Paris sewers. What can we do in a Parisian sewers? I know. Let's pick up all the crap we can we can get our hands As on. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. So we're on the hunt. That looks like we need it. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, <laughs> like breakfast leftovers. Why then, George? Why? Why, 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 why? It was the soggy tissue I'd found in the sewers. <laughs> oh dear. George, mate. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Okay. 
And you absolutely can bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to be asking everybody about this dirty, disgusting tissue. Hi there. Hold it right there. You, you swear right. <laughs> I knew you would come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? Your trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a... a clown. I wasn't looking for those two. Or a phone. I was looking for a clown. Ha! Huh. Ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon dieu! That is awful! And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah! Mon dieu! Then, the man I chased... Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. We need to talk about this tissue. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, mm, disgusting. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? <laughs> Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. Oh. Not telling me anything. Okay, let's talk more about the clown. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> just like you. And just like you. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Ah, you'll need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those uh, stupid sneakers. <laughs> Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, uh, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> ah, that's what you say. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave? Or do I have to call the police? Uh, no, I want to ask a few more things about uh, the nose. Take maybe. a look at this false nose. I've never seen it before in my life. In my life. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know... I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your your poise. Oh yes, there is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning. And tell it just like it was. Oh, we've got to ask him all these things again. Okay, let's ask him about the clown guy. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. 
He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? So you don't want to hear about my experiences in the desert? I fought to make this country what it is today. I'm sure you did, but I'm a little short of time. Uh, maybe you did see the suitcase. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know, but the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. <laughs> really? <laughs> so you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? <laughs> what? Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Ah, oh, excellent. We're getting, we're getting somewhere. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. What was it then? Spilled beans? Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. <laughs> Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. Oh no, we need to get some more details of this coat. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little stupid number that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shame. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. Fantastic. So I'm assuming you've got a, uh, a telephone Thanks number. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Raymond, I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. I'll let you out. Thank you very much. I must say, I didn't realise how talky this game is. A lot of dialogue. I hope you find your man, Inspector. Oh my word, that music's loud. Oh, that's really loud. Okay, we are going to call the number that that guy just gave us, Todrick. I presume it's on this thing. Yeah, there it is. Hello? Who is this? Hi, my name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart, I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? 
I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. <laughs> I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Okay, so we need... Um, what do you clown. know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. I'm gonna ask you again, mate. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Go on. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. Keep going, George. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know, Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Oh, okay. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. That did not help, but I am going to call Nico again. Just to see if we can tell her anything that we found. Bonjour, Kula. It's me again, George Stobart. Hi, George. Any news? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come right over. 361 Rue Jarry. And we are on the hunt for an evil death clown. Right, so we have Café de la Chandelle Vert, which is where we just come from. Rue Jarry, which is Nico's apartment, and the police station as well. Plus all these things we haven't opened yet. So we're going to go to Rue Jarry. Let's go there. Go and speak to Nico Collard. And, um, yeah. Where's her door? Go all the way over here. Let's have a look in the window first. It wasn't the style of the clothes in the shop that caught my eye, but the prices. The same amount of money would feed a starving family for the rest of their lives. I guess people who buy that kind of stuff don't have a problem with their consciences. Probably not. Right, shall we go inside? I think we're going to leave that for the next episode. We're going to see the inside of Nico's apartment and delve deeper into this mystery. So we're going to leave it there for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said at the start of the episode, I really, genuinely, really appreciate all your support on this series. And I hope you're enjoying it as well. It's going to be fun. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please leave a like. I really appreciate it. And until next time, have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening, whatever it is you're doing right now. And take care. <laughs>